old cartoons and animations can be easily converted into fascinating 3D scenes with Comfy UI. First, transform your images into noise. Then, with ControlNet, Rave and Animate Diff, create a fresh new cartoon. Everything is possible. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and create incredible new videos. The workflow I am going to present can be found in my page in openart.ai. You will find their examples and a detailed explanation about how to use it. In resources you have a couple of clips to practice. However, the video of the tutorial is too large. You have to download directly from the source. It is a free video from Vidizi, and the link is in the description. You can test the workflow for free in openart.ai. Click on the green launch on cloud button to start a Comfy UI virtual machine. The machine will load in few seconds and when ready, the Comfy UI canvas with the workflow will appear. Load the video downloaded from Vidizi and you are all set for a short demo. Click on Q prompt and check the results for a 24 frames example. If you are going to run the workflow locally, download it from OpenArt by clicking on the gray download button. In Comfy UI, as usual, drag and drop the workflow over the canvas. On the top left of the workflow you have a series of buttons which will define the steps to follow. This is an advanced workflow which requires quite a lot of tuning. I provide some guidelines on how to do it, but the final results depend on you, the creator. I am pretty sure you can tweak and tune it much better than me. Please write down in the comments how can you make this workflow more consistent and with better results. In step 1, we will set up the video frames and select which one to use as a keyframe. In the Load Video node, select or upload the cartoon you want to convert into 3D. Set the maximum number of frames of the film you want to use. This value can be changed later, but use a relative large amount in step 1 to find out which keyframe to use. Set the width of the video. Higher values tend to provide higher resolution results but require more VRAM and GPU. Finally, select the frequency at which we extract the frames. A value of 2 to 4 is reasonable to balance consistency and speed. We will also make sure that the checkpoints and animation models are correctly loaded. The first model is Animate Diff. We will use version 3. This model is used in the last render step to deflicker the animation. If you use version 3, Remember to load the version 3 adapter as a LoRa. Next, we have the checkpoint that we use to convert the image into 3D. We will use a specialized 3D animation checkpoint, like 3D Cartoon Vision. We use here the Civet AI model loader, so the model is directly downloaded from Civet AI, so you do not need to do it manually. Because of the high memory requirement of Rave, we will use Evolve Sampling with a content length of 1. With this trick, we will be able to run more frames as by default, with Rave. The last model is the 2D recognition model. This is just a regular SD 1.5 model, in this case Juggernaut Reborn. We also use the Civic AI loader so you do not need to search for the model. We will render the complete animation, so we deactivate all the render groups. We activate also the Process All Frames node. Because Process All Frames is active, the condition of switch any becomes true. Then, all the frames will be processed. Run your workflow, and wait until the frames are loaded in the frames preview node. When the frames appear, inspect them one by one, until you find one which you think is the best keyframe. The keyframe index will be the frame number indicated minus one. In this case, keyframe number is 26, so the index is 25. This number is used in step 2. In this step we convert the 2D keyframe into a 3D style image. We will only process one image and tune it until we obtain something we like. We only use one image. To do this, deactivate process all frames and set the number of testing frames to 1. In keyframe, indicate the keyframe index. In our case, 25, which corresponds to frame 26. We want to do the full transformation. So activate all the groups in the render groups active switch. Because we deactivated process all frames, now the condition of the switch becomes false. 
Therefore, the images to be processed are selected from the get image from range batch node. This node takes the keyframe index as a start index and process the number of testing frames we set, which is one in this step. The first step to convert the 2D frames to 3D with Rave is to convert the original frames into a noise latent. For that, we are using a modification of the unsampling node, which allows us to use a context length of one, so we can process more frames than with the regular unsampler. The core of this group is the sampler custom node. It works in a similar way than a regular k-sampler, but it allows us to change the sigmas, which is useful to unsample. The model and conditioning inputs work exactly as with k-sampler. We connect the 2D model and the positive prompt with 2D cartoon in it. Nothing in the negative. The latent image comes from the video frames, which we connect via the VEN code node. For the sampler, we need to load the one we want. In this case, we use the k-sampler select node and choose dpmpp2m. The sigma's input is defined by the scheduler, the number of steps and the denoise. We use the basic schedule node. And now, it comes a trick. We use the flip sigma's node to reverse the steps. With a regular k sampler, the sampling of the latent goes from 0 to 25. With flip sigmas, we go from 25 to 0. This converts the latent image into a noise in 25 steps. Therefore, this group is converting an image into noise like the unsampler. For the last of the settings of the sampler custom, we will not add any extra noise and use a CFG value of 3. The next step is to convert the noise into a new 3D image. To do that, we take the 3D model and the noise latent from the previous step and use the Rave K sampler. The transformation of the image is done by the conditionings which are defined in this workflow. In the positive prompt, we indicate that we want the image to be converted into 3D. We do that by using tags such as as 3D style, 3D rendering, blender or depth. Sometimes, the addition of some words will help to the sampler to get what we want. In this example, we will add green eyes to avoid the sampler makes eyes of different color. In the negative, we use the typical prompts plus 2D cartoon to reduce the chance to have a 2D looking image. In the first control net we use line art, which will draw quite a lot of the details. However, we do not want the weight to be very high. If we do that, the final image will not have the 3D look we want. As usual, we need to connect the line art preprocessor with the video frames. The second control net is depth. With this one, we want that the image has the desired 3D effect. Too high weight will cause artifacts to appear, so we cannot push it to the maximum. The preprocessor we use in this example is Zoe Depth Anything. However, different cartoons may work better with other depth preprocessors. You will need to experiment with them. The third control net is the T2i adapter color. With this control net, we can also help the sampler to be closer to the original colors. We can try here to use higher values than in the other control nets, but if the value is too high there may also appear artifacts in the new images. Finally, the CFG in the sampler has an important influence in the final result. A higher value makes the final image to be more 3D looking, but if it is too high, the consistency and appearance might also not be good. These are the main parameters to tune. We can tweak others, and with experimentation you may get better results than I do. Remember though, that in the Rave sampler you have to use the same steps as used in the unsampling process, which is 25 steps. I will also recommend to use the same sampler and scheduler for the best results. When running more than one frame, the latent from the rave is passed to an advanced k-sampler that uses animate diff and the control gif control net. The additional transformation is small and the sampling starts in step 20. So only 5 steps. The idea is to just reduce the flickering and improve consistency of the animation. This is not yet important in step 1, but after the complete workflow we combine the preview of the 2D and 3D frames next to each other, so you can check whether the results are good or you need to fine-tune the workflow parameters. After you run the workflow the first time, you may want to adjust few of the parameters. In the workflow I give some guidelines of how to do it, and some ranges I found out where different animations can work okay. Increase depth and CFG to get a more 3D-like frame, 
but not too much. Try also to have get enough detail in the image with line art, and stick to the original colors with the T2i adapter. Test also several depth map preprocessors, until your keyframe looks good. In step 3, we will test the configuration determined in step 2 for a very limited amount of frames. We only change the number of testing frames to a small value such as 10 or 12. In this step, the switches in the image loading group remain the same. We only change the number of frames that are going to be rendered. When we complete rendering the animation, the result may not be as good as expected. Some artifacts appear, color is not as good as we want, etc. We then need to iterate and adjust some of the parameters. For example, we can increase the level of detail of the image by increasing the weight of the line art control net. Or we may want to reduce it because it is too flat. We can also change the depth model to layers if the image does not provide enough detail on the background. And so on. Like in step 2, you will need to experiment with the values until you get something you want. If the short animation looks good, you may also want to test the results with a different starting keyframe. Or you may want to increase the number of testing frames to 32. 32 is long enough to have more than one time the context length defined for animate diff. It is also more than two times the context length for a 3x3 three three grid in Rave. Thus, it is a nice number of frames to make sure the final results will be nice. However, you will never know if everything is alright until you run the complete set of frames in step 4. This is the final step and what we do is to run all the frames set by the load cap value of the load video node and create the complete 3D animation. We set process all frames as active, but different than in step 1, we keep the render group switches active. Then, run the Q prompt button and render the complete 3D animation. Run the Q prompt button and render the complete 3D animation. If you like the final result, you only need to save and share your results with your community. Sometimes the results will not be good. You can make small parameter changes and then rerun the workflow for all the frames. However, in most cases you want to iterate to steps 2 or 3. Think first about which strategy to follow. Normally, issues or deviations appear at a different keyframe than the one tested. You can add an image preview node to the final animation and determine a new keyframe. Set the switches of step 3 and fine tune again with the new keyframe. The new parameters you find will be good for the range of frames tested, but I advise you to also test these new settings with the old keyframe. If the changes are not dramatic, it will also work with the old keyframe. Then you can move again to step 4 and run all the frames. Sometimes, you will need to find a compromise between the settings that are good for both keyframe sets. Good quality using this workflow still takes some work and talent from your side, but hopefully can be a good starting point to recreate plain 2D cartoons into amazing 3D animations. If you are like me and do not have a powerful machine, I would recommend you to use a GPU cloud service like RunPod. This is the service I use to develop my workflows and later share with you. While I do this for fun, running RunPod to prepare tutorials and materials cost me some money. If you want to use this service, I will greatly appreciate that you use the referral link in the description. If setting up a virtual cloud GPU is too complex, I can also advise you to use Think Diffusion or Run Diffusion. Promotion links are also in the description and will help me a lot to make YouTube tutorials. If you do not want to use these services, but still like the tutorials and want to support me, you can also contribute by buying me a coffee. Any help is welcomed. And that is everything. I hope you've liked the tutorial. Check out my other videos of Anime Diff and subscribe if you enjoy them. And thanks for watching.